In January, the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors issued a proposal for the responsible sharing of clinical trial data. And in March, participants in an international and interdisciplinary meeting discussed the logistics of how to make routine data sharing a reality. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Jeffrey Drazen, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal. Dr. Drazen, you were very involved in the ICMJE's proposal for data sharing. What was the initial impetus behind that proposal, and what's the committee's rationale and the journal's rationale for heading in this direction with data sharing? So medicine is a knowledge-based profession. It's what you know. And we know what we know with certainty because of clinical trials. They're the vehicle that lets us go from what we think to what we know. For a trial to work, a patient has to put him or herself at risk. So it became very clear that if we're going to change the way medicine is brought forward, that the information derived from those patients who have put themselves at risk needs to be accessible not only to the researchers who gathered it, but to the healthcare professionals who are going to use it in a way so they can meaningfully understand how the information was gathered. In her perspective article reporting on that March meeting, Hogue writes that there's no longer any real disagreement, at least in principle, that the sharing of data, as you say, is a good thing. So what have the disagreements been about? It has to do with what data are shared when and with whom. And there's a broad spectrum. There's some investigators who put all the data they've gathered, not just the data that they're publishing about, in a public domain with appropriate safeguards to be sure that people don't try to identify people who have been in the clinical trial. That's the extreme open data. At the other end, there are people who are willing to share their data under very specific circumstances with the idea of either replicating part of the analysis or extending it in very specific ways. And how to make the decision between fully open or limited open is where the discussion is currently resting. In another perspective article, Beerer and colleagues describe the effort by Harvard's multi-regional clinical trial center to create a global neutral data sharing platform. And that, of course, is going to be needed if data sharing is going to become widespread. What are the biggest hurdles to creating that kind of global platform? If you're doing research funded by the NIH or the Wellcome Trust, they're a big operation and they have the capacity to put together a data sharing website. But if your research is sponsored by your hospital or by a small charitable organization, you're not going to have those resources. So you need a place that can archive your data for a reasonably long time, maybe not into perpetuity, so that others can share it. And what was needed was a website, a place where people could take their data they wanted to share, where it would be safely guarded, parsed out to those people who had appropriate access to it, to be used to answer important clinical questions. You mentioned the people who put themselves at risk by becoming participants in trials. They may well want their data to be used to advance medicine, but they're worried about their privacy. Are there patient advocacy groups involved in these data sharing efforts, and how are their needs being balanced with the others you've talked about? So patient advocacy groups are one of the key constituencies here. The thing that convinced me that data sharing was important was hearing from patients. But you can imagine that there are people with very different perspectives who happen to be patients. There are some patients that are fully free with their data, making them open and hoping people will help discover the basic biology of what's causing their ailments. Others wish to keep that sort of information private. To meet these sorts of needs, there will probably be a bunch of different ways of sharing data. One way that you can easily imagine is that you, the data holder, are able to run my statistical queries, but I actually never get to keep your data. So I couldn't use it to mine through it to find sort of personal information that the patients didn't want in the public domain. There'll be other people who will put data in websites where everything is fully available. And we have to be able to cater to the many different motivations that are in the community in a way that respects all of them. Because people want their data shared, but they want it shared responsibly and respectfully. In a third perspective article, Merson and colleagues discuss the need to involve the data generators in any further work involving their data. What would involvement like that look like? So there are going to be many different ways that data generators are going to allow their data to be shared. And we think that as long as it's clear what the mechanism is, 
and that you're agreeing to share, there isn't going to be a single mechanism that works for every data generating group. There will likely be many, and medical journal editors are going to have to make a decision about whether the data sharing mechanism they believe is adequate for the goal that the data generators wish to make with respect to how healthcare is going to change as a result of their report. Both Merson and Jumbe in another article give examples of data sharing initiatives that actually have already been launched, one in malaria research and one in maternal and child health. What kinds of lessons are we learning from things that are already happening? We're learning that you need to plan data sharing before you start your trial. Doing it after your trial has started is really hard. But if you plan your data sharing with the idea that as I gather data, I'm going to gather it in a way that's standardized, that other people are going to share, you improve your annotation, you improve your data husbandry, and as a result, many new ideas may come from using the data because it's understandable to many groups. That's been the biggest lesson that's learned. If you work together from the beginning, the end product is much more useful. Finally, where does the ICMJE proposal stand? What are the next steps for the journal? So the ICMJE will be meeting in the fall, and we're going to be reviewing public comments and deciding what the best step forward is for the community. We're tackling a really important problem, and at this point, there aren't even mechanisms for storing clinical data. So we want to encourage those to broadly amplify, while at the same time we determine what's the best for the community with respect for data sharing. Thank you, Dr. Drazen.